there's a lot of different factors that have to come together in order to generate sales. And most people think that a sale happens when you pitch and then you overcome objections. What most people don't realize is that overcoming objections, especially in a sales funnel or a launch, actually happens before you ever pitch or make your offer. When you know what objections are going to come up or what you continue to hear, it's very easy to structure content and messaging to set the stage to overcome those objections up front. That will drastically limit the amount of objections that you get. However, it won't eliminate all of them. And we still need to know how to overcome them. So what I am doing is bringing on a co-host, uh, Rachel, who is our head coach, but also helping us develop a sales team. And she's been doing a ton of sales calls and learning how to overcome objections. And we have learned a lot. We've learned a lot of what works, what doesn't work, what are the common objections, how do we overcome it, what is really an objection, what's really going on beneath the surface. And what we decided to do is to create a series, a four-part series on the podcast all about overcoming objections. We talk about how to overcome them in the beginning of the funnel, how to overcome them on calls, and more. So we're going to kick it off with this episode. This is going to be an introductory episode of what an objection is, why they come up, how to address them, the overview of how to address them what two different types of objections are going to come up, which there are two. There's a logical and a subconscious sort of objection you're going to have to face. And we're going to break that down in today's episode. And then the following episodes will be describing how to actually overcome specific objections like I can't afford it, I don't have enough time, and all of that stuff. So this should be a fun series. Get ready. We're going to release one a week. And uh, let's, let's roll it. Keep on listening. Hi, I'm Brandon Lucero, and you are about to experience the new way to thrive in business, entrepreneurship, and life by leaning into who you are, what you love, and standing up for what you want to create. Get ready, because this is where we go against the grain, say no to outdated society norms, and we say yes to change in order to create a happier, more fulfilled world. Welcome to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. Today, we're doing something a little bit different. I'm really excited about it. Um, As you guys, well, if you've been listening to the podcast, you should know this, but if you're new here, hello, welcome. You may not know this. Over the last six months, we have been diving into, actually well more than six months, but I would say since um, September, October of 2022, we've been diving heavy into um, building out the sales team. So really heavy into generating new leads, um, a new sales process in combination with launching to um, continue to sell in between launches and and um, fine tune our sales calls and our process. And we've had a couple people work with us on that process and a couple people on our team dedicated to that process. And so obviously I've been in the trenches doing that. Um, Matt, our director of growth, has been in the trenches doing that as well. And uh, Rachel, our head coach, has been in the trenches doing that as well because we like to have our coaches do a lot of our sales calls and launches and stuff like that. Well, we've been doing a ton of emails and ads and webinars and sales calls. And over the last eight months, we have become better and better at overcoming objections. And so one day I was sitting on my computer and Rachel sent me a message and was like, hey, we should do a series on the podcast where I come on as your co-host and we talk about how to overcome objections and share everything we've been learning. And so today, that is exactly what we're doing. We're bringing Rachel on, who I believe at this point is probably our most returned guest um, onto the podcast. However, over the next four weeks, we are going to be creating a objection-busting series. Um, First episode is going to be today. And Rachel will not be a guest I'm interviewing, but a co-host where we're going to be doing this together. Um, going back and forth on what we've learned and teaching you guys what we have learned and how to overcome objections. So with that said, Rachel, welcome back to the, to the podcast this time as co-host. I'm glad to have you here. I'm so glad to be here. I feel like I want to have a t-shirt that says most uh, recurring guest on the new generation entrepreneur podcast. I can get you a trophy if you want. Yes. It's like a click funnel, like uh, (laughs) a trophy that people share. Like one of those gold records. Yeah. (laughs) But it's going to say most returned guests on new generation entrepreneur podcast. A hundred percent. I would hang that on my wall. Yeah. I, I, I love it. Um, well, with that being said, um, we have outlined the very first episode. And so, um, here's the way it's going to work. And what we're going to do is we're obviously going to just do one episode a week. 
And this week's episode is kind of like um, what we would call an introduction, uh, introductory podcast or episode into what an objection actually is. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about like, where does messaging fit into all of this? What is an objection? Why do they come up? And then kind of an overview of how to start going through overcoming those objections and also some mistakes. Then what we're going to do next week is we're going to pick two of the most common objections, which would probably be something like time and money. Like I don't have enough time or I don't have enough money. Um, and we're going to show you how we would overcome both of those objections and how we have overcome both those objections in different ways. And then the third week will be um, another episode where we pick two more of our top objections that we got and how we overcome them. And then the last episode is how to take what you're learning from busting these objections and listening to your people. And then how do you take that and inject it into the beginning of your funnel using messaging so that you can limit the amount that those objections come up? And again, we'll talk about this um, a little bit today, but your messaging is going to be one of the things that you inject that will not stop, but limit the amount of obje objections you get. So like when I do a big launch and we have our whole coaching team do sales calls, we did 191 calls. We had a 70% close rate. Why? Because I was adding value, creating demand and overcoming objections without people realizing I was overcoming their objections. And we're going to talk about that on the final episode. So um, Rachel, let's, let's kick it off here. Um, I have the outline in front of me. We wanted to talk about um, you know, we wanted to talk about messaging and objections. And I think a lot of people have misconceptions about what objection busting actually is, but it starts pretty early in your funnel. Um, what's your take on messaging and objections like those two together? So I think, first of all, we have to understand, you know, I know we say this a lot of times, definitely inside our program, but even here on the podcast, we've said messaging is everything and why that is is because messaging is not an isolated piece of your business. It is part of every single phase of your business from the absolute top of your funnel when people are completely cold all the way through into your sales mechanism, your offer, your pitch, and your objections. So when it comes to busting objections, how you do that is through messaging, just like how you attract an audience is also through your messaging. So all these pieces are not isolated, rather they all work cohesively and synergistically together, glued, all the pieces glued together through messaging. Right. And so like an isolated piece would be, and we hear this all the time, it's like, well, you're just, this is copy. I don't need to join a copy program. And it's like, no, no, no. Copy would be an isolated thing. Copy's like, okay, your ad has words and that's copy. Right. messaging what you're saying, if I'm understanding correctly, is all your communication from point A to point Z that happens throughout. And copy, you can take that communication and create copy from it, but it's not copy. It's literally yes. how you're communicating. And objection busting actually starts from like, could start technically from your content as well. A hundred percent. And it should start from your content. If you're smart about it, you should be creating content that overcomes objections. And the analogy I like to give about messaging in this context is kind of like if you've ever built a model airplane, you have all these pieces, but if you don't have that little piece of that little glue tube, you can't build an airplane. Right. And much in the same way in business, you have all these pieces like your offer, like your pitch, like your top of funnel, like your objections. But if you don't have the messaging that brings all of this together, you can't build a business. Right. Um, can you give me an example like of how that would work, to, how it worked, like a cohesive thing would work together? I have one if you want me to jump into one. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we were talking b before the podcast about like how messaging it will frame everything. So a lot of the reasons why people get objections is because they don't frame things properly mm -hmm. or set the tone or something like that. So um, for example, like when I go and do like a webinar or a launch, I'll say something like, and I do say this, I said this in our last launch, right? In like day one, I said like, look, what I'm about to show you guys could technically be very complex um, scenarios are very complex things like messaging and communication and psychology. 
but I'm going to break it down very simple, but I don't want you to think that simple means easy because this will take work. This will take time. This will take dedication. And if you're not willing to put in time for this, then you can just leave and get out of here right now because it will not work for you. And that should be expected because anything worth doing and it's going to move the needle in your business is going to take time and dedication. Otherwise, you're just not going to see the needle move. So now what I do is I plant that in the beginning of our training. But guess what that does is it starts to help overcome the time objection. So when the time they get on a sales call or the sales page, it's not like I don't have enough time, blah, 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 blah. It's like, no, Brandon already said this is going to take time. I already started off that way, started the relationship with them that way. And that's what we're talking about is your messaging can frame everything. And if you frame the right things the right way, this is what this, I would assume this is what you're talking about, Rachel. It's like a cohesive, it's a cohesive effort that exactly. from point A to point Z is all working together, correct? Right. And what I think most people do is they look at each one of these pieces in a very isolated way and then they don't work together. When you try and put them together, they don't work together. Like it's disjointed. There's a disconnect versus what you're talking about is, I know you already know through our experience and in the last six to eight months, we've really deepened our experience with objection handling. So mm -hmm. now we're taking all of that knowledge and in real time, we're injecting it into the top of our funnel. We're using those objections in order to frame our content. This just doesn't change the, this doesn't change our messaging in terms of what we're teaching, but it changes how we frame the conversation. Right. Well, and that's a great point too, because, you know, a lot of these calls, you can, you can tell who's going to say no and who's going to say yes, even on simple things like how long they've been in business, what their revenue level is at, how long they've been struggling for. Like, for example, someone who's been struggling for a month is less likely to say yes than someone who has been struggling for a year. So you can start to pick out who these people are going to be, and then you can start to use their identities, their values, their things in the upfront again to bring those right people in. So you start to increase the yeses and decrease the objections. You know, like a, a certain thing might be like, hey, we realize that people that are making a minimum of $50,000 a year are 10 times more likely to say yes. So let's change our upfront messaging, our content to address the people who are stuck at that certain level. And guess what? All of a sudden our yeses and conversion rates go up. Our objections start to become less and, and all of that stuff. So that's the other thing too, is like your messaging, like what Rachel's saying is a cohesive effort that limits objections, but it also lets the right people in and pushes the right people, right people out. Um, going back to your comment, Rachel, with the individual efforts, um, give me an example of what, what that looks like. I think, you know, I think sometimes we, because there are so many moving pieces inside of a business and most of the people who start out are starting out as solopreneurs, right? So we're, right. we're we've got all the hats on, we're doing all the jobs, even the $10 an hour jobs that we shouldn't be doing, we're doing them. So right. We'll create some graphic on uh, Canva and throw it up on IG because we think that that's what our people want to hear about, right? That, those are maybe we heard Brandon on the podcast talking about speak to their problems. Okay, so I create an IG graphic that speaks to their problems. And so then hopefully I cross my fingers that I got them through that step and now maybe they'll DM me. So when they DM me and we start a conversation and let's say somehow I got them on a sales call, now I'm treating the sales call as its own isolated piece, meaning, okay, what I need to do here is I need to pitch and I need to maybe overcome their objections, not realizing that all of these pieces that I've been walking them through to up to this point have been leading to this conversation. So had I been right. more strategic about how I lead them into the conversation, I can maintain control of this conversation. I can maintain leadership of where this conversation is going to go, which should be towards the sale. Right. So it's like, you know, each effort has each effort's goal is just to get someone to the next step without yes. a consideration of what's going to happen at the final step so to speak. So like I'm putting out this piece of content because I want an audience. It's not like I'm putting out this piece of content because I want an audience and a sale at the same time. That's right. 
Right. Or, and it's more like, it's like hopping, you know, you're yeah. just like hopping from one step to the next step, like crossing your fingers. Okay. If I could get them to the next step, then I'll worry about how I get them further right. rather than being smarter. Really, that's like so much more work than is necessary. You could be just much smarter about it right. and more effective if you were kind of looking at it from a bigger picture point of view. Right. So then, and then that's kind of what we teach too inside the program is like, figure out the problem, use your content to figure out the problem, craft a webinar off the problem. And then from the webinar or the sales mechanism, you craft everything else. It's the same title, the same messaging, the same thing on the opt-in page, the thank you page, the thank you page video, the email that's going to go out. And then even the ad is crafted from the same messaging in, in the sales mechanism. Like the sales mechanism becomes the nucleus of your messaging. And when in that is in place, it's much easier to bird's eye view, look down and go like, okay, here's how I insert this objection thing here and that and this and that and still keep everything cohesive. Correct? Yeah. And you know, actually, as you're talking, what I'm envisioning in my mind is like, there's this center, like you said, the nucleus of your messaging, that is your sales mechanism. Right. And then there, there is both a, a, a up down movement and also a down up movement because an up down movement is from the top of your funnel, like the problems that your people are struggling with. Ultimately, you are going through your messaging, you're going to bridge them into like deeper la layers of awareness, problem awareness. Yeah. And ultimately, you're going to lead them towards your solution. But there's also a bottom up movement in your messaging. And which I think is something that, you know, we're, we're going to get to yeah. in this episode of what is really underneath what, where, what's the belly of these objections mm -hmm. and how do we bring some of that up all the way to the top? Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. And that's actually kind of leads me to where I wanted to go next was, is even talking about like demand creation. Cause I think when the, the from the bottom up is like, when you start to create more demand and remove objections at the same time, um, it's because you get like gasoline and fire. But I think that's what a lot of people don't understand with, with messaging is messaging is what's going to, you know, break apart those objections. But what we have realized is every objection is a little bit different. There's logic and there's also subconscious things going on. And what we start, at least what I've realized, especially the, well, here's the, the biggest difference between our launch calls and our like evergreen open enrollment call. It's night and day. Yeah. And the reason why it's night and day is when we have someone go through our launch and they watch me train for three days who I'm overcoming objections, but really what I'm doing is I'm also creating demand. Yeah. And when I create demand, emotion comes in. And when emotion comes in, it starts to trump logic. And so what we've realized is like, if you really want to limit the amount of objections you get, you have to learn how to create demand, which comes from messaging. So you're going to have to like demand creation actually is one of the biggest objection killers out there. And I don't think people look at that the way most people look at objection busting is give me the thing to say, yeah. give me the language pattern, give me the yeah. tip and trick or the script or the template. And it's like, okay, that's very like one dimensional way of looking at objection busting. Because when you get someone excited and they go, they come to their own conclusions. This is what I freaking need. And I freaking need it now. All the logic of I can't afford it or whatever goes out the window. They go like, there's not like, I can't afford it. It's like how the conversation in their head starts to shift to how can I make this work? How can I afford right. this? And um, again, that's one of the things that we wanted to talk about is like, here's the things that you think is objection busting, but actually is not the full thing. So what are some of those things again, that you would say are like, what do most people think they need when it comes to objection busting? You know, I think most people think that they just need some tips or tricks, right? What's the yeah. strategy? How do you get someone out of, uh, how do you convince them, right? This is where people try to come at it from the place of let me, how, how do I convince them that they, this is the right time that they don't right. need to, you know, that they don't necessarily need to talk with their partner or that this isn't going to be as much work as they're afraid that it's going to be. Rather than what you were talking about, demand creation, I think we yeah. have to understand demand creation and objection busting go hand in hand. Yeah. They're, they're not separate things. They are they are two parts of of the same coin, really, because, yes, it is demand creation for your solution, for your uh, offer while also working through those objections. These, these mm -hmm. two can't be separated. They have to go together in order to make the sale. 
right? right? You can't have one without the other. And when you talk about emotion, that is really what we, we all know this. What drives our buying decisions, what drives our actions are feelings, not logic. Right. Okay, we, we might like to think that about ourselves, that we're logical and we think things through, but ultimately that is, that's not true. That's just something we tell ourselves. And that's been scientifically proven. Like there's been so many studies that tell us 95% of our decisions are made subconsciously, not logically, even though we think we're making them logically. And that's been the biggest shift for us is like changing our messaging to speak more to subconscious of, of our audience. How do we teach and add value, but also in a way that makes sense to the subconscious? That's to me, that's been game changing. So going back to what you said, um, just to kind of recap real quick, people think that it's a, re a replicatable pattern that you need to learn in order to overcome objections. And although there are instances where that will work, a mm -hmm. lot of the times it's not about saying the same thing over and over and over again to every single person, but having an understanding of where they're actually at and then having patterns that take you to where you need to go. But yeah. it's not just spitting a magic word at someone and then all of a sudden, oh yeah, you know what, Rachel, I'm glad you said that magic pattern of words to me because now my uh, subconscious fear of whatever is gone. It's like, no, it doesn't, it doesn't really work that way. But I think how you could use those templates and patterns is as a, a tool to help you reach those deeper levels that yeah. that subconscious, right? Like that's where it comes in right. as a tool. It is a, it, it can be an effective tool if it's, you know, worded properly. And if you've, you've got re a really good template to follow, you can use that as like a stepping stone, right? Like that can help you bridge, but then you have to understand, oh, we still have work to do. Right. Exactly. It's kind of like, um, trying to think of a great metaphor. It's not a great one, but it's kind of like you want to dig a hole in the backyard and you're just like, you just have a normal shovel and everyone's like, okay, here's the, here's the shovel that you can go use. And it's like, can you dig a hole in the backyard? Yeah, sure. But like, you know, there might be a rock or something like that where you need a different tool. And then there might be like sand where you need a different tool and you have an understanding of like, okay, there's this sort of like ground happening beneath me. And then you know what tool you need to go grab. And so it's understanding all those patterns and then when to use those patterns, but you have to use your intuition or skill set or knowing to be able to know what to pull from. It's not just saying one pattern the other way through. Can it work? Of course, but will it work all the time? No, of course not. So I think this is a great segue into our second point of like talking about what an objection actually is. And I, I love the way you describe it because um, you describe it like a, a smoke screen. Can you like explain what that is? So, you know, I think people, when they are experiencing fear or uncertainty, they're not always aware of it, right? They're not 100% aware of what is that fear? What is that uncertainty? And so, and yet they feel something and they have to say something. So what they come up with is just a mask. It's a smoke screen. So what they will say is what they, they truly think is the thing that blocks them, right? It's I'm not saying people are being dishonest. They're not being dishonest. But this is all that they can come up with in that moment. So they'll say things like, I don't know if I'm ready. I don't mm -hmm. have the time to do this. I am not sure I can afford it. I need to check in with my partner. There's all these different objections that every single one of us is going to encounter, no matter what we offer, no matter how good we are. And there's something I want everyone to hear. Even if you're at $0 a year in your business, you are going to hear the same objections we mm -hmm. hear, even though we are at multiple millions. Yeah. Right? So the smoke screens are the same smoke screens. And probably the difference, one of the differences in someone who's at zero versus someone who's at 3 million is their skill level in understanding how to message through those objections. Yeah. You'll hear the same thing. Like usually the main ones are time, usually time and money is usually what, yeah. usually what it comes down to. Um, and so I want to give an example um, of what a smoke screen might be. Can you think of any examples of like the surface level answer you got and then what was really actually going on? Yeah. So here's an example. So someone will say to me, um, I don't know. I don't know if this is the right time for me to invest right now. Mm. 
I don't know if it's the right time for me to join the program, right? Because like, for example, our flagship program, NGM Plus, is a six-month program. So someone will say, oh, it's six months. I don't know if it's the right time. I want to be sure that when I join that I have enough time to, you know, that I have six months to devote to it. So maybe I should join next month versus this month, or maybe I should delay it, right? That is the kind of smokescreen that they'll put up. I don't know if it's the right time. Now- I and then could, let me, let me interject. Oh, no, no, go, go to what you would say. Go ahead. I could say, okay, well, when would be the right time? Well, I think maybe like at the end of the summer might be a good time. And then I could say, okay, then let's loop back at the end of the summer. Like that would right. be a, a bad way for me to handle it. Right. Is that I would take what they say at face value and buy into that kind of smoke screen. And just let that, that sale is never coming back, by the way. No, Anybody no. who tells you, loop back with me in a couple of months, that sale is gone. Hardly ever. Yeah. So like a couple of things that I would say, like the surface level thing would be like, well, how do you know when it is a right time? Like, what does that look like? And most people will never even have a line in the sand oh. checklist of what the right time is. So then you make them tell you what that is. Then you can, then the next thing would be like, well, what? out of all that is not going on right now. Like what makes this not the right time? So now you're learning more or whatever. And then you can decide what you want to go from there. Another logical way to look at it would be like, well, you said next month, what if I just give you another month for free? Right. And that way you get started now. Yeah. That will clarify for you. As as the person who's having the the sale conversation, as the salesperson, that's going to clarify for you if maybe really it is a time thing, you know, occasionally that is true. Right. But but this is the clarity you need. Right. And then, so you drop that on them yeah. and then it totally takes away everything they said. And then, and if it is very much really was just a timing issue, like basically when, when it is a timing issue, what they've done is they've already said yes in their head. Right. But logically what they have done is just said, I literally don't have the time. Like they're just looking at their circum. They're making a, a, a yes, but their circumstances are holding them back. So right. now what we have done is we remove the circumstance and then we'll get a yes. But I would say like 80, maybe even 90% of the time when someone tells us it's not the right time and then we give them that, they still don't sign up. Right. And so that, that is exact. The, go ahead. Exactly. So that tells you, okay, it wasn't the time. That was, right. that should tell you. It was a smoke screen, in fact. Okay, yep. so now I got to dig deeper. Now I need to understand what is the true uncertainty. And sometimes, sometimes I'll just call it out. I'll call yeah. someone out and I'll say, listen, Brandon, you just told me that now's not the right time, that next month would be the right time, but I just gave you a month free and you're still on the fence. So what's really going on? Yeah. And that right there is if you if they give you that logical surface level answer, you can come with a logical logical surface level solution. And if it doesn't work, that's exactly what Rachel, then you've identified a smoke screen and it's time for you to dig underneath. And this is what we were talking about is like, now you go grab the, the sand shovel or the, whatever you look at your, your bag of things to say. And sometimes you just have to kind of like use your intuition of where to go. But, yes. but it, this is where your ability to understand what's actually going on psychologically with this person is going to determine whether or not you overcome that objection. So with that being said, what is usually going on when it's, when they have a smoke screen, like what's, what do you, where do you go from there? Well, there are some core fears that drive all of us, right? There is Mm -hmm. like the fear of, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I'm good enough. Am I smart enough? Am I good enough to do this process and get results? Like I have uncertainty about myself. Right. And there's also uncertainty about the program itself. Right. So I know maybe I know that I'm really good. I'm really smart. I'm committed. I'm accountable. Like I'm good. I'm not sure this program is right. So this is part of our job as messaging experts is to understand and uncover where the true fear lies, where the true uncertainty lies, and then message to that. Right. You said something that I, I want to bring up. Um, I wrote it down. As you said, usually when we go to that, what you're talking about right now, is we start to uncover people's relationship to risk. Yeah. And, and that's what the fear is, is like their relationship to risk. What are some of the most common ways that 
a bad relationship with risk will show up. Like if someone who's not very risk tolerant. A lot of questions. Okay. Tell me exactly what is in the program. What are, uh, when are the calls? So you told me that your program has uh, group coaching and it has some uh, one-on-one coaching. When exactly, when are, what are the dates of the calls? Mm. That to me is a red flag. Okay, this person is not, these are not good questions, right? right. Like I'm looking at the quality of questions someone asks me when they're on a call in order right. for me to determine their level of fear. Their right. tolerance of risk. Like, I mean, what's just, the difference? Yeah, just the think call about is- it. Like, what you're you're not going to fix your messaging problem because one call is on a Tuesday instead of a Wednesday. Exactly. Is that is that what you're telling me? Like, that's the exactly. difference here. Exactly. <laughs> it's just like makes no sense, you know. You would be surprised how many people ask me that question. What are the dates of the call? Yeah, the hell does it matter? <laughs> you know, it's so stupid. Well, it isn't. It isn't. It isn't stupid. It is. It is stupid because you're right. It doesn't matter. But what it tells me is, okay, this person is very high in their fear right now. Right. So this is my job now is to help them come down. Right. Is to instill trust in the process and in themselves that they can do it. Right. So that then my focus is is on that. So when would you say if they start asking these like random questions? Is there some part of them that wants to say yes, but is so afraid that the the smoke screen is just a series of, of questions to try to give them a scapegoat? Is that what you think is going on? If you had to guess? Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. And I Most think a, of the time I, I'd agree with that. And I, I think a lot of people um, get a lot of those questions on sales calls, like these random questions, and they actually don't realize how close to a yes they actually are. Yeah. So what they do right. is they start actually answering it. Oh, they it is answer. on like Tuesday at 1, 1 p.m. Like, oh, that doesn't work because I'm in a different time zone. Well, what if I add in an extra call? Blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, you're still using yeah. a lot. Like if people ask right. me questions like that, it is a very big red flag that it is yeah. not a logic thing. So do not use right. logic to try to solve no. that. You need to get to the root of what's actually going on. The right questions, the right patterns can get you to that point. And right. with that said, I think we should move to the last and final piece is like, let's go over an overview of how to start overcoming these objections. And then next week, we'll start getting into the details and specifics of how to do it with certain certain ones. So um, what is the solution? Like, obviously, I think we know is like, you start with the logic and yeah. you address the logic first. And sometimes that'll work. And I'll give an example here in a second. But then when the logic doesn't work, then you need to go deeper. How, what, how do you do that? What does that look like for you? So for me, I, I do use some of my intuition and just, I kind of try to feel out where is the uncertainty. So I actually have a process and we've developed a process inside of our business, how we walk people through in order to make sure that we've addressed all the uncertainty that might come up towards our, our process. Right? Mm -hmm. So like if you have uncertainty about your own ability, there isn't a heck of a lot I can do about that. Right. There isn't a lot I can do about that. Like that is your work and you know, it is what it is. The the best way to handle that is actually on the sales mechanism yourself. You need to make your process so simple to understand Yeah. that when you ask them, do you guys think you can do, you can even do it on your webinar. Do you think you can do yes. this? Right. And they're all getting yeses. And then right. that also is another way to incorporate messaging that overcomes objections. Cause now if Rachel knows, I said that on the training and she knows the person was on the call. Right. And she go like, well, Brandon's broke it down in three steps. And you said, yes. Do you think you process is simple? You, cause you do, you need the people to, to believe that they can do it. Otherwise it's going to be a huge problem. Yes. Right. Exactly. But you know, in terms of what I can truly control is I can eliminate uncertainty about our process. Right. And, and then there's, you know, the way we do it in our business is we just ask, we've, we've structured a series of questions that are designed to walk you through that and to kind of help you self-identify that this is the right time. Yeah. Brandon is the right person. This is the right process. I'm ready. Right. And we'll talk about that more in next episode or like, how do you structure that? We can talk about that, how to structure the calls, when to ask the right questions. Cause there are ways to ask questions in the beginning of the call Yes. Um, to get the answers you need that when the objection finally comes back, 
comes up, all, you're literally just going back to the answer they already gave you in the beginning of the call and using right. it to help overcome that, that objection. So for me, um, I'm just gonna give a quick story you know, of, a, of an example of logic and then knowing when to go deeper and not needing to go deeper. So I, was, I did a sales call with someone and they were like, I, I want to, I, I know you're the right person for this. And like, I've been I, like eyeballing the program for a while and um, I need to go on a payment plan. And I said, okay, great. Like we can do a payment plan. Not a problem. Let's get you signed up. And they said, but I just don't know if I'm going to make enough to um, overcome or to, to be able to pay for the monthly payments. And I had an, a, an option there. I, I could have gone to what is the fear, but I always, for me, I always go to logic first. Let's give a logical answer to this and then let's see if that works. And if not, then let's go deep. Cause you don't want to go too deep too soon if you don't have to. You don't need to get into their fears and yeah. subconscious if you don't have to. We want right. to avoid that if at all, all possibility cause it can get messy. But what I said was, well, your program is $20,000. And if we can get one person signed up in the six months, it will more than pay like double, it'll double the, the investment of the program, meaning our program is only 10 grand. Yeah. And I said, are you telling me that you don't think that I can, like our messaging will get you one client? And she said, no, I know it will. And I said, well, then what's the problem? And she goes, yeah, there is no problem. And she signed up. Yeah. And so that's a perfect example of, a actual real circumstance thing that was taken care of with a logical answer. Right. Had she said, I'm just afraid, um, you know, that it just may not work out or I'm afraid that like, I'll still have to be like, maybe the sale won't come in to the last minute and I'll have like, what, I don't know, whatever. And I say, well, what's the, what is the, then my next question would be like, well, what's the fear of what, what's, what are you afraid is going to happen if you can't pay that, that monthly payment? And then she would start telling me what the fear is. And then I can dig down into what the fear actually is. And I can then maneuver the conversation because right. now we have identified whatever she had used as the objection was a smoke screen because mm -hmm. I used a logical answer and I didn't get a yes. So yeah. now I'm going to go beneath the smoke screen and go like, well, what is the fear? Why is that there? And she may say, well, right. I've been in business debt before and I'm afraid to go back there again. Right. And I, and then you're like, okay, well, let's talk about that. And then you can start to move the conversation somewhere else. I think, I think what we need to remember about this whole topic, like to kind of zoom out for a second and maybe even like recap this whole thing. Messaging is about leading people. It's about leadership. You have to lead people from the problem that they're experiencing all the way to the solution or the transformation that you offer. And the same is true with objections. You have to lead them from the whole sales during the entire sales mechanism. You're leading them by uncovering what is what are the true things going on beneath the surface that they're not telling you by, you know, piercing through these smoke screens and by showing them that they can do it. It is mm -hmm. the right time. The process is the right process for them if that is, in fact, in alignment. Well, and like Rachel mentioned too, is like a lot of times you get beneath the surface, they don't even realize that fear right. is running. And that's, right. that's the biggest problem is like sometimes the objections you get, they have no idea why, <laughs> why they're objecting. Okay. Like a lot of the times, the, like there have been calls where I'm like, so you know that I'm going to get you the clients. You have full belief in your ability. You yeah. know, you're going to make an ROI. Yeah. You know, the timing's right. What's the problem? They're like, I don't know. <laughs> Like that, that will happen too. Like sometimes they're just totally unaware that there's this thing going on. And then you as like the salesperson are so freaking confused because you're like, I got all the right yeses except for the last one. And so you do have to dig down. I, I don't know. It feels like 99% of the time they don't even know that they're running, you know? Yeah, they don't. And I mean, I, I think this is a natural kind of automatic response that we have when we're scared right. of something, right? Like we put up our defenses, we pump the brakes, right? That's just natural human. That's, that's what your nervous system is supposed to do. Right. Do. So that's what we do. Right. Rachel, are you playing music during our podcast interview? Yeah, I am. <laughs> is that the, the play out music episode is done. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I agree with all that. And I, I think this is a good place to, to wrap up and, um, 
just, I think we planted a great, a great seed and kind of an overview and landscape of what we'll be talking about over the next three weeks. So hopefully you guys understand the overview um, of what an objection is, why it's there, where we need to go. And what we want to do starting next week is we're going to dive down into here are some, some specific objections that we got. Here's how we kind of structure a call. Here's how we answer it. And we'll go through these objections to just teach you guys what we have learned. And um, I'm really excited to do it. And I'm really excited to talk about it because I always love sharing my knowing with you guys and you get both of us. Um, actually, Rachel's done more of the calls than I have. And so you get our knowing brought to you guys over the next three weeks. And I'm really, really excited. So Rachel, I'll leave you, let you say your final word and we'll wrap up. All right. My final word is messaging is everything. And I can't wait to dive into objection busting messaging with you over the next few weeks. So meet us there. That's going to be fun. So for those of you who have not left, of, left us a review on I, iTunes, please go ahead and do that. I always love reading those reviews. And um, for everyone listening, we'll see you all next week. Take care, everyone. Hey, guys, thank you so much for checking out another episode of the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, go below, hit the subscribe button, and make sure you click on that bell icon and get notified every time we drop a new episode. Now, if you're looking for the show notes, we have them linked underneath this video, as well as our social media handles and some links to free training and offers that we drop from time to time to help you guys even further. So go check those out if you're interested. And thank you so much for tuning in to the New Generation Entrepreneur Podcast.